In this lesson, we'll look at patterns for iterating or looping through sequences. First, a quick review. A sequence is an ordered collection of things indexed by non-negative integers. For example, we could have a list here, or a string, or a tuple, and there are other kinds of sequences as well. The key to sequences is that a single name, colors in this example, refers to the entire collection, but you can still get to the elements, or they're called uh, items as well, the items in the collection, by indexing. That means that you say the name of the sequence, colors in this example, an open bracket, a number that is the index of the item, zero in this first example, and then a closed bracket. So here colors one refers to white and colors two to blue. Note that indexing starts at 0, not at 1, and the len function, L-E-N, returns the length of the sequence, that is, the number of items in the sequence. In our first iterating pattern, our first pattern for looping through the items of a sequence, we'll talk about the beginning to end pattern, where you iterate through all of a sequence from its beginning to its end. This is the basic pattern. Here it is in Python. You have a for loop that has a variable k that goes in a range length of the sequence. So if the sequence has 10 elements in it, the range statement would make k go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to but not including 10. And then in the body of the loop, you refer to sequence bracket k, meaning sequence 0 the first time through the loop, because that's what k starts as, sequence 1, sequence 2, etc through sequence 9 in our example of a 10-item sequence, uh, 10 item sequence. Here's an example. We have a loop k that goes through range of length of sequence and just prints the items in the sequence. Be sure that you understand the use of the variable k in this example. It's not magic at all. It's just a regular variable that goes 0 through whatever per the range statement. In our second example of iterating through a sequence, we'll look at uh, three forms of an idea. The idea, we might call it the other ranges, uh, other ranges pattern, is to iterate through part of a sequence. Or maybe you go through the sequence backwards instead of forwards or some combination. Here's the first of the three forms. We'll have a for loop that is a variable, let's say k, in range, and in range, we give just a number, the, the number of items we want to examine in the sequence. So if we're looking, for example, at every other item in a sequence, number would be the length over 2. And then inside the body of the for loop, we refer to sequence blah, where blah is some formula involving that loop variable k that is carefully crafted to produce exactly the right indices. Here's an example. If we, first of all, have the variable last, be the length of the sequence minus 1. And here's our loop that goes, this is going to go through every third item, and it's going to go backwards through the code. Every third item, but backwards. So we'll have the length over 3, that's how many items we want to look at. And then inside there we'll print sequence bracket, and since we want to go backwards, well k starts at 0, so 0 times 3 is 0, so last item is the first thing we look at when k is 0. And then when k is 1, we look at last minus 3. When k is 2, we look at last minus 6, and so forth, working our way backwards. An equivalent way to solve the same problem is using form 2, where we have, a, again, a for loop, but this time we do the work in the range statement. We choose a range statement that gets that motion going backwards every third item in this example. And then our sequence bracket becomes just k, the loop variable. So the work in this first one is done in the expression in the brackets. The work in the second form is done in the range statement. Here's our example. Again, last is the length of the sequence minus 1. So we start at that point, length of sequence minus 1. We have 10 items. We start at the ninth because that's the index of the last one. We go down by 3 each time, and we stop when we get uh, uh, past the, through the 0th one, when we get to the minus 1 one. Here's a third way to look at this same problem that sort of is, mixes the two ideas. Again, we have k in range number, where that's however many we want. 
but this time we introduce an auxiliary variable m so we can talk about sequence m and not have the more complicated formula that we saw back here. And then what we do is we start m out at something and then through the loop, I, I, it should be on the slide, we change m as needed uh, in this pattern. So here's an example. Again, last is the length minus 1. m starts out as the last. And each time through the loop, m goes down by 3. So we start sequence last the first time. And then m goes down 3. So sequence 3 before that and so forth. And then we can have the simpler form of the range expression that we saw in the first pattern. So you can use whichever of these three forms you want, and you can use different forms for different problems. So whichever works better for you when you're trying to iterate through part of a sequence, or perhaps go through it backwards, or some combination of both. Our next uh, pattern for iterating through a sequence is almost the same as the first two. This is one where we go through some or all of the sequence, but we use an if statement to process only ones that satisfy a condition that we're interested in. So here's our general pattern. k goes in the range length of sequence, though we could use any of those patterns we saw on the previous slide as well for going through part of the range. And then we have an if statement. If sequence k meets some condition, then we do something with sequence k. Here's a concrete example. We have our loop going through the sequence. If the type of sequence k is an integer, so this one focuses in on the ones that are integers, and in this case counts them and returns how many there are. So that's very much like the previous two patterns, but I wanted to uh, highlight the fact that it's commonplace to process only some of the items that you actually examine. Here's our next pattern, the find pattern, where you go through some or all of the sequence, typically all, and look for one that satisfies a condition that you're interested in. When you find that item, you return its index or position in the sequence. And if you have, if there is no item in the sequence that meets that condition you're interested in, you return minus 1 to indicate so. Here's the code in Python for this pattern. You have k going in a range. In this case, I've gone through the whole sequence. And if sequence k meets this condition, whatever it is you're interested in, you return k, the place the, where you found the condition met. And if you get all the way through, and only if you get all the way through the loop, after the loop, you return minus 1 because, see, you got all the way loop and you didn't find any that met the condition, so minus 1 would signal that. Here's a concrete example. Finding an element in the sequence that's bigger than 20. So we're going through the whole sequence, and if sequence k at any point through as we go through is bigger than 20, we return k. So if sequence 0 is bigger than 20, we return 0. If sequence 1 is bigger than 20, we return 1. So as soon as we find one that's bigger than 20, we leave the function, because that's what return does, and return that position. If, on the other hand, we go all the way through the sequence, none of them were bigger than 20, we would return minus 1 to indicate that. Note the placement of this second return statement. It's not inside the for loop. It's not if it's bigger than 20, return k, else return minus 1. You got to go all the way through the loop before you can say it's not in the sequence. So it's only after the for loop ends that you can return minus 1. Uh, in a variation of this pattern, the function might return true if it found the item, that an item that met the condition. Maybe you don't care what the item is, you just care whether there is one in there or false if it's not. Or you could return the item itself and maybe use none to indicate no item in the sequence meets the condition. Here's the next pattern, two places at once. In this pattern, at each iteration of the loop, you examine not one, but two items in the sequence during that iteration. Here's the Python code for it. So here we have it going through some or all of the sequence. And we're looking at sequence such and such, sequence index 1. And at the same time, we're looking at sequence index 2 for a different index. So index 1 is one place you're looking at. Index 2 is the other place you're looking at. Often, one of these two is k. You're looking at position k, and the other is something different. Here's a concrete example. Suppose that what you want to do is find how many places in the sequence one item, uh, the, one item is bigger 
than the previous one. So for example, if this is the sequence, 7 is not bigger than 9, so that doesn't count, but 12 is bigger than 7, so that's 1. 35 is bigger than 12, that's 2. 24 versus 35, nope. 25, versus bigger, 20, 25 is bigger than 24, so there's the third place where one element was bigger than the previous. 12 bigger than 7, 35 bigger than 12, 25 bigger than 24. So with this function would return 3 for three places where one element is bigger than the previous. So here we would go through the, the loop. We'll go the length minus 1. You'll see why in a sec. And we look at sequence k plus 1 and sequence k. Two places every iteration. So when k is 0, we're looking at sequence 1, comparing it to sequence 0. That's why we started, uh, well, so there we are. So when, if k, when k is 1, we're looking at sequence 2, comparing it to sequence 1. When k is 2, we're looking at sequence 3, comparing it to sequence 2, and so forth. And then we return however many times we had that. Notice that we stop one short of the length of the sequence because of the k plus 1. If we didn't do that, we'd sort of go past the edge. Uh, and it's often the case that you have to restrict the range, as we did here, to make this pattern work. Our next pattern is the parallel sequences idea, where at each iteration of a loop, you're examining two completely different sequences, looking at the kth item, the same place of each during that iteration. So let's see, it looks like my example is preceded by code here, but here's the, the pattern for k in range length of the sequence 1, and then we have sequence 1 here, and we're looking at the kth item, and sequence 2, and we're looking at its kth item. So when k is 0, we're looking at sequence 1, 0, sequence 2, 0. When k is 1, we're looking at sequence 1, 1, sequence 2, 1. When k is 2, sequence 1, 2, sequence 2, 2, and so forth. I'm going to assume in this description that the length of the sequences are the same, so we could use either 1 as our uh, number of things to go through. Here's a concrete example. Suppose you have two sequences, sequence 1 and sequence 2, and you want to see how many times the item in the second sequence is bigger than its parallel item in the other one. So 55 is bigger than 11, that's 1. 10, 22, nope. 30 is bigger than 10, that's 2. 21 times 44, nope. 31, 33, nope. 30 is bigger than 12, so there are three places where the item in the second sequence is bigger than its parallel item, its corresponding item in the first sequence. Here's the code for that very example. We go all the way through the length of, say, sequence 1. Again, I'm assuming that the two sequences have the same length. And if sequence 2 at position k is bigger than sequence 1 at position k, we up our count. Um, this is Using parallel sequences is, in general, an error-prone approach, not to be recommended, since it's easy when you're doing that to modify the data so that you modify one sequence and forget to modify the data in the parallel sequence. But nonetheless, it's an important pattern to understand. Here's our last example, the max or min, can be used for either one. Again, the example seems to have snapped up ahead here. Uh, here's the code. This is for max, a similar one for min. You start out with an, uh, an index, we'll call it k for max, to 0. So we'll start with index 0. We'll loop from the next index, 1, through to the end. And if sequence k, so sequence 1 the first time, is bigger than sequence of our max ind index, then this max index becomes k. So if, as we're going through, the current item is bigger than the biggest we've found so far, the place of the biggest becomes the current place. And at the end, we return the place of the biggest. Here's the code for it. It's almost identical. This code shows the min with a less than instead of a greater than, so you can compare. Run through a concrete example yourself to convince yourself that this code is correct. I'll comment that uh, we could have combined this with other ranges. Uh, there we are. There's the basic idea. And in another variation, we might use we might return not the index of the biggest, but the item there. And this idea only works with non-empty sequences. If the sequence is empty, uh, we'll return 
uh, zero as our answer, and that's not that may not be correct. So uh, it requires the sequence be non-empty. That's the end, I think, of uh, the patterns. I hope that quick intro gives you some ideas. Uh, oh, by the way, there's with a the range starting at one because the thing starts at zero.